Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Bootstrap 5 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn how to implement tooltips. That's right. So tooltips are an extremely important concept uh, which will really help in user experience in terms of guiding the user about what is some component, how to go about it or a kind of a hint or help text. You would see this mostly in almost all modern web applications. So you cannot really ship an application without tooltips, right? That's why it's really important for us to learn how to implement that tooltips using Bootstrap Framework. This is part 22 of the Bootstrap 5 full tutorial playlist. The playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out. I have planned around 40 um, tutorials on this and we are on 22nd uh, tutorial now. So halfway down, still halfway to go. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. All right, so so far um, you, are, you are seeing these topics on your screen, which um, I have covered so far in detail with live practical examples. Along the journey, we have done few live projects. Uh, make sure you check it out where I have done live coding on simulation of applications to help give you confidence on Bootstrap Framework. Uh, so yeah, so today we are in the 22nd episode learning Bootstrap tooltips. All right, so Bootstrap tooltips. What are bo Bootstrap tooltips? It's nothing but a small icon which will have when you hover your mouse on some element, it will show you some kind of a help text or a hint text, right? So remember a few important things about tooltips in Bootstrap. Tooltips rely on a third party tool, okay? So tooltips and popovers, these two components of Bootstrap rely on popper.js for positioning, right? So if you don't have popper.min.js, it will not work, right? So if tooltips or popovers are not working in your application, chances are that you missed out on installing popper.js, right? So you must include popper.min.js before bootstrap.js, right? That's number one. But in Bootstrap 5, it's all bundled together and it's, the link is there already CDN. So I'll show you that also in just a bit. So the Bootstrap bundle.js will contain everything. It will include popper.js. So if you just include bootstrap.bundle.js, you'll have everything that you need to work with tooltips or popovers or any component. Now tooltips are opt-in for, opt for performance reasons, right? So you must initialize them yourself which means that I will show you how to initialize. So if you just copy the code from Bootstrap, it will not work because there are needs to be some settings. I'll show you that. So first setting is we need to include the script, one time script to initialize the tooltips and the popovers. Then we have to use that in the button, right? So these are the three steps. First include popper.min.js, then initialize the script, one time script and apply it on the elements that you want to use, right? And the data toggle will be tooltip, like how we have seen in drop downs, it will be data hyphen uh, drop down equal to drop down, right? So here it will be data hyphen toggle equal to tooltip. In drop downs, it will be data hyphen toggle equal to drop down, right? So this is all about the theoretical explanation. Let me show you now practical hands on example. So I am still working on the this example, which we started building as part of our live uh, application. We have made some good progress on this. Um, so let me let's add some tool tips on this to these buttons, right for learning. So let's get started. Uh, I'll go to the bootstrap uh, website and go to tool tips. Now go to this is uh, version five bootstrap documentation. So first thing you do is copy this code, which says enable tool tips everywhere. In jQuery, if you're coming from that world, you would know that we initialize things, right? So similarly, just copy it or you click here and then go to your HTML file, right? And then finally, bef so you have loaded your, see, you have loaded popper. I have loaded bootstrap.min.js. So this will work, right? Popper.js first, then bootstrap.js, always remember, right? And then we will say script and add that code here, right? This is a one-time initialization. So remember a lot of people will make mistake of not including popper. So make sure that you copy that correctly. Once you have done, um, include the one-time script. What it does is it will initiate the bootstrap tooltip, right? So once that is done, then just copy it um, wherever you want, right? So just copy the button with that and let's go and add it into 
Mm. Let's go and add it in the one of the button area that we have used. Uh, say this button, right? So let's add a button here. And what we'll do is we'll copy everything. So this is a data total model. So here we have added tooltip. Let's go refresh. So now you see tooltip on top, right? So it's getting 100% width. So what we are going to say is call eight and I'm going to give class call two. Okay, so now let's make it small. PTN small. Um, class button. Okay, call two button secondary toggle tooltip on top. Right, okay, so this is good. Let's just. Okay, uh, that's the sizing. I think we'll look into that. Okay, so now you see, now we have this beautiful tooltip. Now let's, if I want to add for this, right, action, let's do see how to add that. So what we will do, we'll first copy the data toggling, right? We'll copy this data toggle, go to action, put it to that. Data toggle, data test placement, uh, placement top, and then title I'm going to say, click to see actions. See? That's how simple it is to add tooltips to your web application, but it really adds beauty, right? Like in terms of it tells what it does, right? Similarly, you can have it. Now you see it is at the bottom. Similarly, you can have it left. So you have it left. Similarly, you can have it right. So that's up to us um, where we want the positioning of this tooltips, but usually um, it's I've seen it at the top or at the bottom, depending upon how you want to use them, right? Now that was the usage part. Now you can disable a button, right? Again, this is disabling button has nothing to do with, um, you know, um, the tooltip as such, but you can just say, uh, if you just say a class of button, right? And say disable, it will be disabled, right? So that's something that um, you don't have to really specify it on a tooltip. You can use it just on a button like this. You can just say disabled and your button will be disabled. See, this is disabled. But now tight, uh, this is also disabled if you see the title. So what you will do, you will say show disabled title. And you will have the property disabled. Now you see. Okay, so this is disabled totally, but it should, uh, I think I missed out one of the styling. Okay, just copy that and you will see that to give it as a try, it's your homework. Um, so yeah, these are other uh, events that you can use like dispose, dos, disable, dot enable, all the JavaScript implementation, but mostly uh, any good thing you would use it uh, just like for highlighting, right? So that's how you would see it. Now let me show you that. So when you say disable toggle, it will not show. When you say just tooltip, it will show up, All right? So this is a simple uh, component uh, to use, nothing fancy or nothing complicated about this. Um, use it to help your users to navigate and to guide them, right? Similar lines, there is one more component called popover, right? Which is exactly same, but only thing is it gives you more data or much better presentable kind of a tooltip. That's called popover. We'll see it in the next episode. I hope you're liking the series. If you do, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Please do let me know how you are finding this series. I'll be happy to receive your feedback. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.